How's it going? Swatch with me. Caron Dosh 15 Neo Color 2 Water Soluble Wax Pastels. Also known as Watercolor Crayons. Okay. So this is the little tin. They are, a, it is a very thin tin. I wish it was a little bit thicker. Makes it, would make it easier to get it open. And it has a hinged lid. I really like the tins that have hinged lids. And these are the watercolor crayons. And I'm calling these Caron Dosh. I think in the past I've said Caron Dosh because it sounds so cool. But I really have no idea how to pronounce the name. Almost everybody says Caron Dosh. All the YouTube artists I've watched say that. And I did, uh, I did wipe these down with a baby wipe to get the coating off. I've had these for a while, by the way, and I have used them at least one time. <laughs> so I put a little cloth here to keep these from rolling because they will roll that way and right off the sill and everything. <laughs> right off the counter. And this for, since these are watercolor crayons, I do have a system. Oh, and I need to read the colors off to you. Now, I put these in the order by the name of them. And I was thinking, oh, I hope I got them right. Because I like to do the lighter color to the darker color. And that's how. And I like to put them in the rainbow order, starting with white, ending with black. That's how I like to do it. Okay, so we have white. Vermilion, Scarlet, Orange, Yellow, Yellow Green, Emerald Green, Turquoise Blue, Cobalt Blue, Ultramarine, Purple, Violet, Ochre, Brown, Black. Okay, and I am going to zoom in a bit so you can see the process or part of the process anyway. Okay, that's it. Yeah, that's okay. That looks about right. Okay, so the first order of business is to color color it over that black there. Didn't take off the the thing. <laughs> it didn't take off any of the black there. Sometimes whatever I'm using, water-soluble coloring media that I'm using, will actually rub that black off. But that, uh, I recommend for the most part, almost every coloring media I've, I've swatched does not blend this out or take off the color. And this is a Statler uh, Lumo Color Whiteboard Marker, and it's the black one. <clears throat> So I do have cling sheets on my wall, uh, calendar cling sheets I use for each semester. Okay. And then, let's see if I can, I can remember. <laughs> I can. You'd think it was the middle of the night that I've been up all day, but no, I haven't. First order of business. Oh, yeah, I need to, uh, just a little bit more here. Second order of business, I should say, is to paint over the colored, colored in line there or space just a little bit. I don't want to go into the dry part because I do want to keep the dry part, the wet part after I brush the, the color and then paint the brush. Paint the brush, paint the, paint the brush. Paint the crayon with the brush. I don't know how much of that you will see, especially when I get to the second column. Oh, yeah. I'm glad I wiped these down first, you know, to remove that coating. Ooh, that looks pretty good, right? And then brush it on. Oh yeah, that looks great. It's not uh, 
budging the black color underneath. Okay, so I put a paper towel back there so that uh, the crayons don't mess up the the order, I guess. Wait a minute. Or <laughs> the order. Oh my gosh, I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, so the crayons do not mess up the mat. And I'm not sure how how permanent now water soluble crayons are not permanent on paper they are water reactive and but on harder surfaces non-porous surfaces they could be more permanent or harder to get off harder to remove Ooh. This is Oat Art Studios hot press paper. It does have a little bit of texture to it, as you can see by the by the white little white pieces there showing up through the color. Is vermilion an orange color? artists out there who might be watching this wonderful swatching video I've noticed that sometimes or a vermilion is more of a dark orange than a light red but I've always thought that that's kind of a light red kinda Not enough water on your brush? Let me put those aside. I have worked with these and I'm not, I wasn't really crazy the first time I worked with them. I didn't think they had enough color to them. I think was my major complaint. Here we have Scarlet. Oh yeah, directly on the color. I'm also not seeing the coloring line showing through. You know, the drawing lines. But it's not dry yet, so maybe I'll wait a little longer for the drying process to take place. Oh, wow! That's very vibrant. I must have used uh, my signature colors, you know, uh, purple, violet, blues, greens to make something. I really cannot remember what <laughs> what I did with these what did I make wipe off the little droplets this is orange and even look at it I'm thinking what is that is that like goldenrod or something which is more of a, a yellow color and even putting it on the paper there I'm not seeing you know, an orange. I'm thinking orange as in a deeper, like here, vermilion looks more orange than this one does. Yeah, this is not orange. <laughs> Goldenrod. Dark yellow. Like I said, I just went by the labels, that's all. What kind of orange is that? Like, uh, the inside of an orange, maybe? You know, the fruit inside. I don't know. Maybe it'll look more orange when I go back in and, and look at the, the video later. 
And we have yellow, which looks a lot like a light yellow. More than, you know, basic, what is basic yellow? A darker yellow, perhaps. Whoa, neon yellow. And purples or magentas that pass off as purple. Man, it looks pink in my field monitor. The field monitor is a little off. So I can't really depend on that. I usually only use the field monitor to make sure that I'm in viewing range for you. It's a pain to adjust it to how it's supposed to be or how it's supposed to show the colors because I have to do it every time I do a video or almost every time because after the video I I clean up and I put my toys away every time so that the cats don't get into this stuff could be dangerous to them That's purple. Violet, purple. So again, we have technically three different colors, if you think about it. Each color has three different colors. The first color, when I run the paper, uh, run the crayon over the paper. The second, when I brush it. Oh man, that is loaded. When I brush the color, the already put down color with the brush, with a nice wet brush, and then painting the crayon. With the brush. Ochre. Yeah, that's ochre, yellow ochre. Some people call it yellow ochre. A 
getting it all over. I'm making a mess. Brown. Nice scratchy color on textured hot press paper. I really like it for sea salt and watercolor or grading pencils, watercolor pencils. It has a the best design. It creates the best design. It's because it's slightly textured, so that's why I like it. I guess it probably could be a little darker. I don't know. Well, that's another thing. If it's watercolor, it should be not as opaque as I like it to be, I guess. That works. That's a nice brown. I like that brown color. Ooh. Being rough with my my tools here. Last color, black. Oh, I put my my wrist, <laughs> my hand into it. I like it to be a nice opaque color. What can I say? I mean, maybe that's why I have a problem with these high-end products because they they don't seem to shine or have enough color. To suit my taste, I guess. I don't know. Okay. Not bad. I will I will try and use these again making some type of abstract uh, papers that I like to do. Maybe attempt a scene or something. I don't know. I don't know. That's all I have for you. Please comment, like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and have an artistic day. Bye.